this crochet project you're going to need your four millimeter crochet hook as well as a darning needle or a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors the cot the yarn that I'm using is I love this cotton it's a white sparkle but this type this style of yarn comes in many fun colors so you have a lot of different ones to choose from just be careful with some of the darker colors because they tend to bleed so if you're going to use a darker color then make sure that you rinse it or wash it before you crochet with it so the first thing you're going to do is just take your yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop and then take your crochet hook again I'm using my four millimeter crochet hook just put it right through the loop hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down, and then cinch the loop around the crochet hook, just like this. And then we're going to make a chain. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through the loop for a chain. And you want your chain to be whatever width that you want for your soap. So I'm just use, making mine for the average size for Dove soap. So if you're making yours the same size as me, I'm starting with a chain of 16. So again, you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a chain. So go ahead and make the chain the length that you need for your soap saver. And again, I'm starting with a chain of 16. So this chain of 16 is called my starting chain. And now I'm going to start my first row. So for the first row, you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So just count back one, two, and then go into that second chain from the hook with your crochet hook. Go ahead and bring up a loop. And you have two loops on the hook, go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. So I'm going to make one more with you. So go into the next stitch, bring up a loop and then finish a single crochet. So go ahead and make one single crochet into each stitch back across. So now you should have a total of 15 stitches after finishing that row. And we're going to move up to the second row. So to start the second row, you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three and then go ahead and turn your work and now we're going to start our first puff stitch row so I'm going to show you how to make a puff stitch so the first stitch that you're going to be making your puff stitch into will be right next to here is a little upslope from the first chain three so you're not going to be working into that base stitch, you're going to be working into the next stitch over. So you're going to yarn over, and then you're going to go into that next stitch, and you're going to bring up a loop. And you're going to bring the loop up to the same height as your other stitches, or the same height as your chain three. Then you're going to yarn over again, and then you're going to go back into the same stitch and bring up a loop, and again you're going to bring that loop up to the same height as your other stitches, and we're going to do this one more time. So you're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, bring it up to the height of all of your other stitches. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, 
and go through all of the loops except for one. So you go right through all of those loops except for one and now you have two loops remaining on your hook. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through those two remaining loops. And you just completed your first puff stitch. So I'm going to make a couple of them with you. You're going to be making one puff stitch in each stitch back across. So again you yarn over, go into the next stitch, and I'm going under both loops of the stitch. You're going to bring up a loop to the height of your previous puff stitch or the stitches on your hook. So that's your first one. You're going to do that three times. So I'm going to yarn over again, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop to the height of the other stitches, yarn over again, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop to the height of the other stitches, and then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all of the loops except for one. You have two loops remaining, you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through those two remaining loops. And then you've completed your second puff stitch. So I'm going to work two more with you. Make sure you have the hang of it. We're, be, we're going to be making again one puff stitch into each stitch back across. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that same stitch, bring up a loop to the height of the other loops on the hook, yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop. So that was my third time. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all of the loops except for one and then yarn over and go through the two remaining loops. You can see how you're creating these beautiful puff stitches across. So I'm going to make one more with you. So again we're making one puff stitch in each except for the last stitch. So you can see that we started the row with a double crochet stitch. Well we're going to end the row with one double crochet. So we're going to have one puff stitch in, in each stitch between the double crochet on the end and the chain three to start which represents a double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop to the height of the other puff stitches, yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop to the other to the height of the other stitches, and then one more Yarn over, go through all the loops except for one, and then yarn over and go through the two remaining loops. So go ahead, finish your puff stitches, and when you reach the end, come back and I'll show you how to turn and move up to the next row. So now I've reached the end, and for beginners, I would recommend just counting. So our first chain three counts as our first stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So now I'm on my fifteenth stitch. So in that last stitch, I'm just going to make one double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that last stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through those two remaining loops. And now I have a double crochet stitch on the end. And this is how my work looks so far. Now we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then turn your work. So you're always going to start with a chain of three, and you're always going to end with a double crochet. And then you're always going to have a total of 15 stitches when you're finished. 
So we're going to alternate two rows, the puff stitch row with a double crochet row. And you may decide that you want to make yours all puff stitches, which is fine. So whatever way that you want to alternate, you could even do a double crochet, puff stitch, double crochet. So you can have fun with the different designs that you make for your soap saver. Some people even like to spell out letters, so you could make the puff stitch form a letter and you can design a soap saver that way too. So for this one we're just doing a basic soap saver and for this design I'm using a puff stitch for the first row and then I'm going to make one double crochet into every stitch with the alternating row. So you just yarn over and then you go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then just make a double crochet, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops, two loops remaining, yarn over and then just go through the two remaining loops to complete a double crochet. And then you're just going to make one double crochet into each stitch back across and then when you finish you should have a total of 15 stitches for this row. So again you yarn over go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then just complete your double crochet. So go ahead, finish making one double crochet into each stitch back across, and then come back. So this is what my work looks like so far. So again, for beginners, I would recommend counting each of your stitches. You should have 15 double crochet to finish that row. Then, we're going to move up to the next row. So again, remember, you're going to start with a chain of three. You're always going to start with a chain of three. One, two, three, and then just turn your work. And again, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be alternating between the puff stitch row and a double crochet stitch row. So I'm just going to start you out again with the puff stitch and then I'll just let you finish continuing on your own. So for the puff stitch, again, you, you yarn over and then go into the next stitch over. Bring up a loop. And again, you bring it up to the height of your initial chain three and then yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over for the third time, bring up a loop, and then just yarn over and go through all of the loops except for one, and then yarn over and go through the two remaining loops to complete your puff stitch. And again, you're just going to make one puff stitch into every stitch across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to be making a double crochet. So I'm just going to work a few of them so you can see how I hold my hands as I crochet. So go ahead, finish your puff stitches all the way across, and then come back. So this is what my work looks like so far. It's turning out gorgeous. Then we're going to move up to the next row. So for the next row, again, you're going to start with a chain of three. One, two, three, and then turn your work. And then now we're going to make a row of double crochet. So you're going to be alternating your puff stitch row with a double crochet row, one double crochet into every stitch, and you're going to continue alternating the double crochet row and the puff stitch row until you have a total of seven puff stitch rows, and you're going to end with the puff stitch row. 
So seven puff stitch rows and then end with the puff stitch row and remember to alternate between the double crochet and the puff stitch and then come back. So this is what mine looks like so far. So I finished, here's one puff stitch row, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can see that I ended with a puff stitch row and that both sides are completely straight, which is what you want. So now we're going to make a V-stitch round for the top of your soap saver. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So after you finish your last puff stitch row, we're going to make the V-stitch round, which is also going to join this top portion with the bottom portion. So you're going to be folding it up. When we, um, We're going to go across the top here, and then we're going to turn and go across the bottom. But I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to start with the top. So what you're going to do after you finish your last row, the puff stitch row, then you're going to chain four, one, two, three, four. And this first chain four counts as a double crochet chain one. And then you're going to turn your work and this time you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch as your chain four to complete the V stitch. So just yarn over and then just go into the same stitch as your chain four. Then bring up a loop and then just complete your double crochet. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops, two loops remaining, yarn over and go through those two remaining loops. So this is your starting V stitch. So you can see how you have a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So when we started, we had a chain four, which counts as a double crochet, chain one, and then we made our last double crochet and we formed a V-stitch. So now you're going to skip a stitch, so you're going to skip the next stitch and work a V-stitch into the second stitch. So yarn over, skip a stitch, and then work a double crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to chain one, and then you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch. So just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, and then make a double crochet. And then you finished your second V-stitch. And you're going to make these V-stitches all the way across the top, and you're going to skip a stitch between. So you're going to skip the next stitch, and you're going to make a V-stitch into that next stitch. So that's a double crochet, chain one, and then another double crochet in the same stitch to complete your V-stitch. So go ahead, finish making your V-stitches all across the top. I'm going to go ahead and make one more with you. So I'm going to skip the next stitch and make a V-stitch into the next stitch over. And when you reach the end, come back and I'll show you how I moved to the bottom to join the top and the bottom. So I've reached the end. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven V stitches so far. I have two stitches remaining. I'm going to skip that next stitch and I'm going to make a V-stitch into the last stitch on the row. So you go into that last stitch and complete a V-stitch. And then you're just going to go fold your work so that the bottom is up. The V-stitch round is facing you. Let me just back up. So here you can see how I have the V-stitch facing me and I fold it up the bottom 
and I'm going to be working in the stitch right across. So I'm going to skip that first stitch and work into the second stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and then I'm going to go into that second stitch on the opposite side and then I'm going to make a double crochet. And that will effectively join the top and the bottom. Then chain one, make one more double crochet in the same stitch. And then we just joined the top and the bottom. So now you're going to continue across the opposite side. You're going to skip a stitch and then work your V-stitch into the second stitch until you get to the other side. When you reach the end, come back and then I'll show you what to do next. So I'll make one more with you. I'm skipping a stitch and working my V-stitch into the second stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So now I've reached the end. I have one stitch remaining. I'm just going to skip that remaining stitch and I'm going to make a slip stitch into the third chain of that first chain four that we made. So on the opposite side we have our first chain four and I'm going to go into that third chain. So just find that third chain. And then you're going to make your slip stitch just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you just joined the round. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through. Actually go ahead and pull enough yarn through to sew down the side of your soap saver. So now you're going to get your tapestry needle and we're going to sew down the side. So now I have my tapestry needle on the long end that I left for sewing. And before you start to sew, make sure that you have the wrong side facing you. So decide which side you want to have showing on the right side and which side is going to be the wrong side. So this is the side that I don't want showing on my soap saver. I mean it's hard to tell with this yarn both sides look beautiful but I'm going to choose this one side to be the right side. So now again the wrong side is facing you because we're going to turn it inside out after we're finished sewing the side. So you want the wrong side facing you. Then go ahead and take your tapestry needle and you want to weave it down the side of the V-stitch because you don't want to sew the top round together. So you can see that I brought my loose yarn end down. I want the top, top row to be open on the side. So I'm going to sew at the base. So you can see that I'm at the base of the V-stitches, that last round that we made. And then I'm going to sew down the side of the soap saver. So you're just going to go in and out sewing the double crochet or the chain three on the end on each side of your soap saver. So you just go in and out and just sew the two sides together. and then come back. 
So I finished sewing all down the side. Now I'm just going to tie a knot at the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and bury the loose yarn end. So I'm just going to go right along the bottom here and just weave the loose yarn end through. And then I'm just going to go right back because I don't want the loose yarn end to come loose. And I'll even go like another time. And then once I have it buried the way that I want, then I'm just going to go ahead and trim it. And then I'm going to sew the other side. So you can start at the top or the bottom, wherever you want. Just make sure that it's even and that your puff stitches are lining up and then you can go ahead I'm actually going to use the loose yarn end at the top to tie a knot so I'm going to start at the top and make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work And then you just take and just sew it just like you did on the other side and then just bury any loose yarn ends after you finish and then come back. Then after you finish sewing both sides and burying your loose yarn ends, go ahead and turn it inside out. And you have your gorgeous soap saver. So the last step is just making the little tie that goes to the top of your soap saver. So I'm going to show you how to make your tie. So for my tie, I just took the same colored yarn, just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop, your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around the hook and then we're going to make a chain so for my chain I made a chain of 80 so I'm just going to show a few on video tutorial so there's one two three four so go ahead finish your chain of 80 and then come back so now I finished my chain of 80 but I'm going to show you a neat little trick for making a sturdy little strap so you can if you have troubles you can just use this chain honestly and just finish off this one would work too but I'm going to show you how to make a little bit of a sturdier chain and I just have to show you the stitch first before we can do that so here you can see the stitches you have here is your front loop and then back here is your back loop of the stitch so here's the second stitch here's the back loop and then here is the front loop of that second stitch so now if you flip that stitch over on its side you'll see that there's a back stitch so we're going to be crocheting into that back loop or that back portion of your stitch. So I'm just going to bring it back to the front. So here's the front and then when you turn it on its side you'll see that back stitch. I'm going to put my tapestry needle through one of them and then you can see it again 
here is that back loop and then here is the front loop and then I have my tapestry needle through the back of the stitch and that is the back portion that we're going to be working into with our stitches. So after you finish your chain of 80 here I have the front portion of the stitches and then I'm going to take my crochet hook and then I'm going to go into the first back loop so I'm going to go into that back loop with my crochet hook and then I'm going to bring up a loop and then just make a single crochet. So then in the next stitch I'm going to go into that back loop. Just one loop is all you should be bringing up with your hook and then just bring up a loop with your yarn and then make a single crochet. So if you have trouble with this you can just go right into the stitch and make a single crochet but this is a fun stitch that I learned for making straps and I like to use it sometimes so I'm just going to show you in case you like it too. So again I'm only going into that back, the very back of the stitch into the loop in the back of the stitch and then I'm just making a single crochet and I'm going to make one single crochet into each of those back loops the loop on the back of your stitch. So I'm just going to show a couple more. So again I'm going into the back loop and I'm only having one loop that's coming up on my hook. And then I'm bringing up a loop and making a single crochet. So again, if this is too hard for you, you can just make a regular single crochet or you can just use your chain. But this is a nice trick to learn if you just want something a little sturdier and something a little different, give a little bit of a different look. Alright, so I'm going to work one more and then I'll just let you finish. So I just wanted to show you what a gorgeous strap that this stitch makes compared to if you just used a regular chain. So it's just something different that you could make. It turns out really gorgeous. It almost looks like a Tunisian crochet type of stitch or style. Now after you finish your last stitch, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends. Then you just take your finished strap and then you can weave it in and out. So wherever you want your tie, I'm going to put my tie on this side. So you just go right in to the wrong side with your tie and then bring it up. And then I like to extend it usually over two V stitches and then go back into the wrong side. And then I just go past one V stitch and bring it back up through. I usually go between the V stitches. That's what's nice about this V stitch pattern. So anytime you want to have a tie around a bag or like this soap saver, you can make the V stitch round at the top and then it works perfectly for weaving a decorative design for weaving a strap in and out if you wanted just like this. And then just keep weaving it in and out until you get back to where you started. Then after you're finished you can take your favorite soap now the soap saver, you're supposed to use like your, um, you can use your, you know, you get those little slivers of soap 
too small to really use anymore, but you don't want to waste them. Well, they're perfect for a soap saver because you can just add them in. Or you can start with a larger soap like this one, and then when you get those slivers of soap, you can still use them until they're completely gone. So then once you have your soap in there, you can just take and tie a little bow. So I don't tie a knot because you want to be able to remove it. But you can hang your soap saver in your bathroom and then you have your built-in washcloth with the soap. It works great. Like I said though, be careful with the colors because some of the colors do bleed with I Love This Cotton. But I just love the feel of I Love This Cotton. It's one of my favorites. So just keep that in mind if you have some of the darker colors that they may bleed. So again, you can make a longer loop if you want to hang it in your bathroom. For mine, sometimes I'll just lay it in the soap dish, so I like to tie a little bow. So whatever you want to do with your soap saver, but they make wonderful gifts.